Hello again everyone, welcome back to my workshop. This is an interesting question. It was posed by uh, Matija, I think that's how you pronounce your name, sorry if I've got that wrong. Uh, Matija asked on a Facebook group about setting up the programming for a Unilight lighting controller. And uh, what he's got is an 8-channel controller and it can have six different sequences and he wants to use all six of them depending on the conditions. And the conditions are this. When he switches on the radio, the turbine's going to be off and the flight mode switch will be in its middle position, which I believe is the takeoff position. And he wants the lights to go to sequence one. And it's all driven by, in effect, servo position. When he switches the turbine to its run state, he wants the light sequence to go to sequence two. When the temperature of the turbine then rises above 550 degrees, he wants it to go to light sequence three. And he can then fly around in takeoff mode and normal flight mode with the lights continuing in sequence three. When he switches to landing mode, he wants it to go to light sequence four. When he moves the turbine switch to shut down, he wants it to go to light sequence five. And then when the turbine temperature drops below 150 degrees, go to light sequence six. Can it be done? Yes, of course we can. Well, uh, it takes six mixers because we're going to use one mixer for each of the uh, positions for the lighting sequencer. And it takes eight logic switches and a couple of telemetry controls as well. Now, uh, it's quite a complex requirement, this, but uh, we'll see how it runs fairly straightforwardly. Anyway, eight logic switches, two telemetry controls, and six mixers, I think, justifies a double espresso and a chocolate biscuit for the sugar for your brain. And so we'll have some fun with this one. As you'll hear on loads of YouTube channels, I'm going to plead with you to like this video and subscribe to the channel, even switch on notifications. I believe YouTube's algorithm tends to push you higher up the search results the more likes and subscribers you have. So if somebody's searching YouTube for help with Jetty, then you can help push my videos up to the top of their results. And if you would like to contribute to my espresso and chocolate biscuit fund, uh, very kindly, many people have. There is a, a little link PayPal me down in the description box below. So the uh, thinking behind this is actually pretty simple. So if I explain it, you'll understand what we're doing. What we're going to do is uh, set a mixer for the, the function, one mixer, for each of the lighting controller sequence positions, or if you like, the servo travel point. And that mixer will be switched on and off by a logic switch. So you've got one mixer for each of the servo positions and one logic switch for each mixer. Why have we got eight logic switches? Well, a couple of them need three inputs, and so we have to cascade from uh, a two-input logic logic switch to the next one to be able to add the third input. That's all. So there's basically one logic switch switches one mixer on and off. Six logic switches to the six mixers. The clever bit then is thinking out what are the rules for those logic switches. What unique conditions are there going to be in each of those six places that means that logic switch will not only come on but will switch off as soon as you go on to the next point. So that's the basic setup. Let's get into it and have some fun. So let's look at the programming required. This servo here will show us uh, for real the output from the whole system proving that it works. I've set up a sensor emulator to show us the temperatures and at the moment it's emulating a temperature of 25 degrees. So the first thing we have to do is create the function for it. So we add a new function. I'll call it lights. And we do not assign a control to it. 
its travel will be done purely by the mixers. And of course we need to assign a servo for it, so we have a channel to control it. We'll also need telemetry controls. for the two different temperatures. So we'll call this one above 550. And here I'm going to choose the sensor emulator, but of course you would choose your uh, exhaust gas temperature type of control will be a switch. We change it from less than to greater than and 550. And just for completeness, I always like to set the default to be minus 100. In other words, it's switched off if it sees no telemetry, uh, has any problems. It forces it to a definite value. You don't need to do that if you don't fancy it. And the other one will be below 150. Same again. Choose your exhaust gas temperature. This time the condition is, it is less than, 150. And again, just for completeness, I do like to force it. If you're not bothered, don't bother with enforcing a default. Uh, and as we can see, uh, below 150 is switched on, above 550 is switched off, and that's because the temperature is currently 25, so it's below 150. Now we can set up the mixers very quickly, because we can copy them. So we go to free mixes, from, it's going to be from the lights to the lights. Into the advanced, the master value will be plus 100. Now, in the switch field, we're going to be putting in the logic switches that we make. However, for the moment, I'm going to put in any switch that's not being used by the transmitter, so I can force them all to be off. The reason being, if we leave the switch unassigned, then those mixers will all be on, they'll all be conflicting with one another, um, and if you want to do any testing part way through, it's hard to see what's going on. So this step at the moment is not absolutely necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway, so that I can force all the mixers to be off, and I'll come back and replace those with the logic switches. Right, curve is going to be a constant. Say OK to that. That's basically the mixer set up, other than we'll change the value for each uh, sequencer setting through mixers 1 to 6, and as I say, we'll come back and assign the logic switch once we're done. So now we can just copy that five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's basically the six mixers all set up. We can go in now and actually assign values to them. Right, so if we edit curve, come to it, press that. I'm going to press the menu button so that each click of the dial gives 10% rather than 1%. See if I don't, every click is 1%, takes a while to get to minus 100. But if I press the menu, it jumps 10% at a time. So the exact values you set in here will be determined by the lighting controller that you have um, because of its separations. Um, and you may want to jump around uh, to different values rather than go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You might want to go 1, 5, 3, 6, 4, 2, that kind of thing. And just set up your values here. So say OK to that. Come down, edit. In this one, put in the value that you want. Just going for the values that will even out the spacing 
between these six mixers. which may well work for this lighting controller as it stands at the moment. But say so you choose the values that you need for each of the different lighting control points. There we are. And other than coming back and putting in the logic switches, that's all six mixers set up. Nice and easy. Now, to the bit that uh, is going to tax your brains a little bit. This is where you need your espressos and chocolate biscuit for its sugar. The logic switches. What we need to do is define a switch that will only be on in particular circumstances and will go off as soon as those circumstances change. And we need to do that for all six of the mixers so that each mixer will get a switch so that only one mixer at a time can be switched on. In other words, those logic switches can only ever have one of them on at any one time. If two of them are on, then two mixers are going to be on and your programming gets all messed up. So let's have a look at them. Go into here, menu, and we'll call this one because it's going to be position one, sequence one of the lighting system. Enable it. And what are the unique conditions to it? Well, uh, he said he's going to start off in flight mode take off with the switch at the middle so I've got a three position switch here which I will be using as the flight mode switch so normal flying take off landing mode and I'm going to use this one my locking toggle switch as the turbine run switch so turbine off turbine on and he said he'll always start up the radio with the flight mode switch in the middle so there's our two conditions for this switch that switch in the middle that switch down so if we put them up we can go in here say that switch middle okay that switch down there we are the condition will be and and that's it that's all we need to uh, push sequence one onto sequence two Sequence two uh, is a bit different. It's going to require uh, three inputs to the logic switch. And since Jetty only allows two inputs, what we have to do is put two inputs to the first logic switch, then create another logic switch, which takes the first logic switch as its first input. And then we can put the third input in as the second input to that logic switch. And that's what we have to do here. And the reason for that is uh, we'll be... Uh, still having the mode as the takeoff and the turbine switch on. But that alone will not be enough. If you remember, the uh, sequence three will be those switches in the same position, but the temperature has gone above 550. So if we didn't specify temperature below 550 for this one, then both sequence two and sequence three logic switches would be on at the same time and confuse the thing. So first of all, we'll put that to the wrong place. Go in here, say that, okay. Come down to control two, turbine running. Okay to that, condition is and. And now we need to add the third uh, parameter. So we'll call this two A and it's the A version that will be used to run the mixer, not the original version two. So come along here. And so control one is going to be the first logic switch, which was logic two. And control two is going to be our telemetry control. Uh, above 550. Well, of course we want it to be below 550. So we just choose that and say reverse. So now it will be on 
when it's below 550 degrees, condition is and, say OK, and there we are. So 2A can be the switch to run mixer number 2. Let's come down. This will be 3. OK. And 3 is going to be very similar to 2 and 2A in that uh, the temperature needs to be above 550. But uh, we don't need the turbine run switch on as long as we're in the correct flight mode and the turbine temperature is above 550. We can assume that the, the turbine run switch is on. And uh, the other thing is, of course, he, he also wants it to continue in this sequence 3 when we're in normal flight mode. So basically, we want this logic switch to work when the flight mode switch is there, when the flight mode switch is there, not when the flight mode switch is there, and the temperature is above 550. Well, when the flight mode switch is there and there, it means it's the reverse of being there. So that's the first one we can do. There's that. Reverse it, which means it's on in those two positions. Say OK. And now the telemetry control will be above 550. OK to that. Say AND as the condition. So now in flight modes, normal flying or take off, that's fine. In landing mode, it'll be off, that's good. And when the telemetry control goes above 550 degrees, that will be on. So I'll turn the emulator up. There we are. And if it drops below 550, it was the other one. So that's uh, sequencer 3 set up. We can come down and set up sequence 4. And sequence 4 was going to be the landing mode with the turbine on. So we come down here. Now you might think, well, if I've just used temperature in the last one, why didn't I use uh, the turbine switch on? Because it would have conflicted with the previous one, whereas this time I really need to use the temperature because in sequence five, we're going to be having turbine off and temperatures, etc. So anyway, here we go for number four. Uh, it's going to be flight mode would be landing. OK to that and turbine switch in the on position. So I'm taking that out, clear it. So turbine switch on. Flight's in the landing mode. There we go. And come down and it. And we're OK there. Right. Number five. Now, this again is going to be a 5 and a 5A because we need three inputs, uh, because it's going to be very temperature dependent, because we're going to be uh, flight mode is landing, turbine is off, but the turbine temperature is above 150, will be sequence 1, and sequence 6 is going to be the same, landing mode, turbine off, but temperature below 150. So that's why we need the three for these. So down we come. First of all, flight mode to landing. Uh, turbine off. To that one. And OK. Come down. Five. A. And so that's going to be logical switch five and then the telemetry control we want it above 150 so we just take the blow 150 reverse it okay to that and there we are so again 5a not 5 will be used to run mixer 5 and finally For mixer sequence six, 
we can see that uh, we'll be in landing mode and the temperature has dropped below 150. So, no, no, landing mode. Okay, and telemetry control, temperature below 150. This time we don't reverse it because we do want it on when it's below 150. Come to and, say OK. Now, this tells us the result of all the outputs. So let's check through it. OK, I'll turn the temperature down nice and low. We've got the flight mode switch at takeoff mode, which is what he said he'll start up the radio in. And the turbine is off. Only one switch is on, and that is sequence one. Good. Next, we're going to start the turbine. What we should see is the 2 and 2A two come on, and one must go off. Otherwise, we'd end up with two mixers on at the same time, and it would be ruined. That's good. Now we can ignore number 2, because 2A two is the one that's going to be sent to the mixer. And that's going to happen. Uh, fine. So three will be when the temperature goes above 550 degrees. OK, so the turbine's now running. It's warming up. I'm turning up the temperature. And there we go. Three has come on and 2A has gone off. We're not worried about two because it's not assigned to a mixer. It's 2A that goes to the mixer. It's gone off. So only one mixer is going to be switched on. And at sequence 3, he can take off, switch to normal flying around. 3 is still running. We don't care that 2 has gone off because it's not assigned to the mixer. So he can fly around between take off and normal flight modes. And the lighting will be at uh, position 3, sequence 3. Next, he wants to come into land. So he'll go to landing mode. So 3 should go off and 4 come on. There we are. Again, it's the only one going. Then he shuts down the turbine. So five should come on and four goes off. There we are. We can see five and 5A five have come on. 5A is the one running the mixer. So we're not too bothered now about what happens to five. 5A five is the one running the mixer. 5A is turbine off, but of course it's been at its full running temperature. Now the turbine's cooling down, the temperature's dropping, and when it gets below 150, 6 should come on and 5A should go off. And there we are. So we've proved through all the sequences that there is only one of the relevant six logic switches is on at any one time. So we can now go ahead and assign them. We'll put everything back to the starting condition, so switch to middle, take off mode, turbine off, temperature is low, and we'll go in here, and instead of SF, we can clear that out and say that it's sequence one. Okay to that, and there it is, it's gone to point one. Come down here, edit that. This time it's going to be Logic switch 2A, not 2. OK to that. Come down here. Just work our way through clearing a logic switch 3. OK, OK. Sequence 4. We'll get logic switch 4. OK. Sequence 5. Uh, did I give it logic switch 4? It should be, yeah, it's actually logic switch 5, sequence 4, named 4, okay? So sequence 5 gets the relevant logic switch for it, which is that one, sequence 5, okay? No, it wasn't, wrong. Got to go further down, it's 5A. Thank goodness I remembered that, otherwise it would have not worked at the end. Okay, to that one. And finally, this chap gets sequence six. 
Right, uh, here's our turbine exhaust gas temperature. I'll turn it up to some sensible -ish value. Right. If you're uh, here in midsummer in Britain, there's the, the value. Rest of the world, uh, something a bit nicer, like there. Um, so we've got starting positions, starting positions. Here is the output that's driving the light controller. So let's start off. We're in position one. We'll start the turbine. It should go to position two. Lovely. Now the turbine's starting up. Its temperature is rising. Temperature's rising. Gets to 550. It should go to position three. There we are, position three. And you can fly around, take off, go to normal mode, take off mode as much as you like, and it stays in position three. Okay. Now we're going to land, and it should go to position four. There we are. We've shut down the turbine. It should go to position five, and the turbine starts losing temperature. And when it gets below 150, there we go, it goes to position six. Job done. There we go.